So the Fort Myers real estate market is on fire and you think you'd like to get a piece of that. Well, you're right, as this housing market is unlike anything that most of us have ever experienced, and chances are that now is the best time to sell your house if you've even been thinking about it. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't put any thought into the home selling process. Here are six tips for home sellers in our current red hot sellers market. And if you've wondered if you even need an agent to help you in this market, I touch on that too. So be sure to stay till the end of the video to hear my details on the FISBO situation. One, despite the craziness of this market and what some homes are going for, you still need to price your home appropriately, which means you need to have some comps or data to support what you're asking. Now let me explain. First, people shopping in your price point will have expectations of what a home in that price point should include and look like. If you decide to try and sell your home for $400,000, but it's really a $300,000 home, buyers are gonna be disappointed and will likely notice this in the photos and maybe not even bother to schedule a showing. People that have been shopping for a $400,000 home know what a $400,000 home should include, so make sure you price your home accordingly. In this market, if a home is priced fairly, it should be under contract pretty quickly. If a home has been on the market for longer than a couple of weeks, it's likely priced too high. If you price your home fairly, it's gonna be snapped up quickly. The second reason why you wanna price your home in the land of reality is that there's a good chance your buyers will not be cash buyers and they're gonna be getting a mortgage. It's likely that the final price will be more than the list price, but you wanna put the responsibility of bringing the extra cash and making up an appraisal shortfall on the buyer. These days, waiving an appraisal contingency outright isn't as common as offering to cover an appraisal gap up to a certain amount. So if the buyer offers to cover an appraisal shortfall of say $10,000, they're responsible for bringing that cash to the closing table if necessary. But if the actual appraisal gap is more than that, the buyer has the right to walk away and get their deposit back. Now, if that buyer isn't willing to negotiate the contract, you could look at being back at square one with everybody wondering, what's wrong with your house? Two, plan your showing strategy. There's a lot more people out there looking for homes than there are homes for sale, which means there's a huge scramble to see a new listing when it comes on the market. It's like a giant game of musical chairs with a lot of people wanting to get into each home that comes on the market as soon as it hits the market. Once your home hits the market, it's gonna be close to impossible to live anything remotely similar to a normal life. It's gonna be a constant revolving door of agents and buyers coming through your home. It's best to plan to be out of your home as much as possible during the first few days of a listing. If you're a snowbird, it might be easier if you've already gone back at north this summer. If you're a year round resident, maybe plan to go away for a couple of nights. If you have pets, it's probably best for them to have a little pet vacation too, instead of worrying who all these strange people are in their home. If your home can be vacant for two or three days, we can pack as many showings in as possible for those days when you're out of town. Then, when you come back, we can review the offers and make a decision on which way to proceed. Three, think about selling your home as is. In the Fort Myers area, the Florida Realtors as is contract is used about 95% of the time for residential transactions, but very few transactions are actually as is. This is for a couple of reasons. First, very few people actually read or understand the contracts before they sign them, which is a terrible idea. But second, the way the contract is written allows the buyer in their sole discretion to walk away from a transaction and get their deposit back during the inspection period. So most people negotiate to keep the transaction alive rather than lose that time that the home has been under contract and have to go back to square one as either a seller or a buyer. But if you truly want to market your home as is and make it clear in the listing that you aren't going to be making any repairs or offering any credits, you can do that. In that case, buyers should still be allowed to get an inspection for informational purposes should they want it, but the inspection period should be very limited. Also, if you're selling your home as is, you're still required by law to disclose any material defects that you're aware of. So don't think you can sell your home as is to get away from any problems that you already know about. Four, if you want to speed up the offer and negotiation process and ease the common concerns of buyers, or if you're considering selling your home as is, consider doing some of the buyer's legwork ahead of time. Get a home inspection done before listing and provide the report to buyers so they know what they're potentially getting into and so you can save time with and possibly eliminate the inspection period. Keep copies of all services you've done to your home such as roof work, HVAC services or any pool repairs so the buyers can see you've taken care of your home. If you haven't had your AC serviced in a while, consider getting it serviced as a sign of good faith to potential buyers. In my experience, transactions always work out better when all parties enter with their eyes wide open. Five. How do you juggle the sale in your current home while buying a new home? Now, if you're just selling a vacation home, this isn't likely to be a huge concern, but if you need to coordinate your home sale and home purchase, it can be very hard to line up two back-to-back -back closings and the overall process of waking up in your old home and going to bed that night in your new home. 
I get it. The transitional period moving between homes can be stressful, so I would encourage you to ask for what's known as a rent back. During a rent back, you basically become a tenant for a few extra days or weeks or whatever amount of time you need, and you stay in your old home until the new home's ready. These days, buyers are really bending over backwards for sellers, so asking for some extra time in your home, often for free, can be a great benefit. You just want to ask for this up front in the listing, if you really require it, and it needs to be limited, and you can't really expect to stay in your old home for free for months and months. Six, shouldn't you just skip getting your realtor altogether and list your home for sale yourself? I mean, I guess that's an option, and you'll be really proud of yourself when you get an offer, but you're also going to leave an embarrassing amount of money on the table. With this market, where homes are often getting multiple offers and selling above the list price, I would want an agent to market my home to the largest audience possible in order to bring in as many offers as possible. You're not likely to get the best possible price if you don't have multiple competing offers. And of course, you don't have the experience reading and understanding the Florida real estate contracts and addenda, negotiating at the, at the same level as a professional, or reviewing all of the terms of an offer in addition to the price, as well as all the other bells, whistles, and gotchas that come along in your typical real estate transaction. Chances are the agent that you hire will cover their own costs with the escalated price that they're going to bring you, plus you'll have the added peace of mind knowing that an experienced professional is guiding you along the way and watching your back during the entire process up to and after you sign on the dotted line. If you're thinking about selling your Fort Myers area's home and you want to bounce some ideas off an experienced real estate agent, please reach out to me as I'd love to talk to you. You can call me, you can text me, or you can email me anytime and be sure to ask for my free home seller's guide with no obligations. Before you go, check out this video right over here to see all about how to sell your first home ever and what's involved. Even though it's geared towards first time sellers, it's a great refresher for anyone thinking of selling a home. Check it out and I'll see you in my next video.